similar to some problem types you're going to have where we give you a formula for a compound. You're going to have to draw the Lewis structure and then based on the Lewis structure, decide the molecular geometry and the bond angle. I've added another column here called 3D sketch, which I'm just going to use to help you connect the Lewis structure to the molecular geometry. Okay, my first one, CO3 minus 2. Making the Lewis structure, first I'm going to decide who goes in the middle. Carbon does. And then the oxygens are going to attach to the carbon. I need to add up the total number of valence electrons. Carbon has four valence electrons because it's in group four. Each oxygen has six. 18 plus four gives me 22 electrons. But remember with an ion, the number of electrons changes. This has a charge of minus two, meaning it has two extra electrons. So I'm going to make this structure using 24 electrons. Starting off with single bonds. Two, four, six. Eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Now I'm going to check to see if I've satisfied the rule of octet for everybody. All of the oxygens seem to have eight, but carbon doesn't. Carbon only has six. So the way that I'm going to reconcile that is I'm going to double bond one of the oxygens. I can pick whichever one I want. So I'm going to move those two electrons from oxygen into here. Now that Lewis structure is done, I'm going to put brackets on it and indicate the charge as I do with ions. Okay, when I see something with three atoms attached, one, two, three, and no lone pairs, that tells me this is going to be trigonal planar. If I wanted to show what it looks like in 3D, it looks like a circle split up three different ways. The bond angle associated with trigonal planar is 120 degrees. Again, these decisions are made off of how many atoms are attached to the central atom and how many lone pairs there are. Up next is BEH2. Beryllium's going to go in the middle, hydrogen's on the outside. Beryllium has two valence electrons. Each hydrogen has one. I have a grand total of four electrons to work with. Two, four. Did I satisfy the rule of octet? No, but both hydrogen and beryllium are exceptions. Hydrogen wants two electrons, beryllium wants four. Two atoms attached to the central atom, no lone pairs, makes it linear with 180 degrees. If I wanted to sketch the 3D, it looks the same in 2D as it does in 3D. Up next, NH3. Nitrogen goes in the middle. Hydrogen's attached to it. Valence electrons. Nitrogen has five. Each hydrogen has one. Gives me a total of eight to work with. Starting off with single bonds, two, four, six. I have two more electrons to assign. They're going to go to nitrogen because hydrogen is full. And this Lewis structure is done. Now, I have three atoms attached and one lone pair. Three atoms with one lone pair gives me trigonal pyramidal or pyramidal, depending on who you ask. In three dimensions, this is going to look like a tripod. The nitrogen sitting on a tripod of hydrogens with a lone pair as a hat. The bond angle associated with trigonal pyramidal is like that of tetrahedral, but a little bit smaller. So we call it less than 109.5. OK, the last one, water. Oxygen in the middle, hydrogen around. Hydrogen has two valence electrons. Oxygen, I'm sorry, each hydrogen has one, so a total of two. Oxygen has six valence electrons. Gives me a total of eight to work with. Two, 
four, six, eight. Okay, two atoms attached to the central atom and two lone pairs makes it bent. Which bent? The bent that's more like tetrahedral because its electron geometry is tetrahedral, or what we call the parent structure is tetrahedral. Water is frequently drawn like that as a bent structure. So what these two have in common is they both have four total things attached. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. As a result, their bond angles end up similar because they have the same electron geometry. Okay. 